And now this is the um, same file that I made in one of the other tutorials and I made this file in Tinkercad and um, and so now I'm going to walk you through how to prepare the file to be printed on the 3D printer. Um, this is a program called Cura. It's made by Ultimaker. It is a free program and this program is a what's called a slicing program and so um, after you make your model in Tinkercad it's not quite ready to be 3D printed. Um, the slicing program is, uh, the, the importance of the slicing program is to um, prepare the model and create what's called a tool path. And the tool path will tell the 3D printer where, you know, where to go on the printing bed and, um, you know, how much uh, filament, uh, 3D printing filament to extrude. Um, during that process. And there's also a whole kind of slew of other um, options here that we need to think about. So um, and the nice thing with Cura is that it allows you to save your profiles. Um, so, um, and a profile would just be all your print settings. And so um, now this is a new, uh, a new installation of Cura, so I don't have any of my, my profiles in here. Um, and so I'm going to kind of walk you through what I've been doing for the 3D uh, or for the texture rollers. The other thing that Cura allows you to do is if you select these, the, the object here, now I've already opened the file. So, um, you know, just uh, when you are in Tinkercad, you download the file as an STL, save it to your computer. And then when you open Cura, you just go and go to file and open file and, f and navigate to your STL file and open it. And when you do, it'll look something like this. When you select these options here, there are a, you can actually manipulate the file within Cura. So you know you could do things like scaling and you could turn it on its edge and things like that. Now I've already set the scale in Tinkercad, so I don't need to change these settings here. So I'm just going to unselect that. But just kind of know that you do have some options for rotating, uh, duplicating. You can set multiple pieces on the print bed and that type of thing. Um, so now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start from the top here. And I'm going to kind of just walk through some of the settings that I've been doing. And so with these texture rollers and this particular printer, I've been setting the layer height at uh, 0.2 millimeters. Now I should say that these settings are specific to this particular object as well as this particular printer. And so I have a, um, a small little uh, mono price uh, mini printer. It's a $200 printer, um, cheap and um, relatively cheap, I guess I should say. And, um, and so that, that's how I'm gonna um, make these settings here. So I'm gonna change the walls, uh, wall thickness to one millimeter. Um, and I'm going to take the, I want the bottom and the top to be the same thickness as the walls. So I'm gonna set the bottom top thickness also at one. Um, and uh, I'm gonna, uh, I guess I'll leave the wall. Um, I guess I'll leave the wall line count at three, and um, I'm going to change this top layers to um, three as well. Uh, bottom thickness I want at one, and uh, we'll leave the bottom thickness at five or layers at five here. And so, um, okay. So now let's go to the infill. Now the infill is what percentage of um, uh, fill there is. So in other words, like 100% fill would be a solid object. Now you would never want to print a solid, or rarely would print a solid object. Usually you want to be around in the 20, 10%, something like that. So I'm going to set this at, at um, 15%. And um, so the infill pattern is um, just the the way that the infill looks. Um, you, you can set these for different um, structures for the infill. I'll just leave mine at grid here. And um, okay, now we'll go to material. And the material is, uh, we're printing in PLA. And um, so um, I'm going to set my printing temperature at 200. That's the temperature of the nozzle. The build plate is how hot the plate is that it's printing on. And so I'm going to set this a little bit lower to 50, only because this printer seems to have a tough time um, 
getting up and staying at 60. And so keep in mind, these are Celsius temperatures. So 200 Celsius is actually quite hot. Um, so the speed is going to dictate the speed at which the um, printer is moving while it's um, while it's extruding. And so for this particular printer, 50 is, is good. Um, now in the travel, we um, we do want to enable retraction, and that will pull the, um, the the filament back into the into the nozzle just a little bit when it changes direction or stops. And so we'll leave that checked. I would leave this unchecked here, and um, we will mostly just leave this. We'll enable print cooling. We'll leave that at a hundred, and. Um, now, the support is important if you are printing anything that has a very severe overhang or if you um, have something that is uh, potentially not going to stick to the print bed very well. Now, if you click that, it will open up some other options here. And um, so you can say, OK, I want just the support on the build plate or I want the support actually in the model. For this particular model, um, I, I think we can print it without support. Now, it, you'll see these red areas, and this is these red areas are areas that show uh, places where it's it, it thinks it might need support. Now, there might be a few little undercuts here, um, but um, I'm going to go ahead and print this without support. Uh, I think we can get away with it. I was just zooming in and looking before the demo here. And I think that those angles are not severe enough where we would need support. Now, this is something that you might change each model. You know, so you might look at your model and say, okay, that there's a lot of overhangs there. Um, I'm going to need support. So what that support is is it builds just like a little temporary wall in the in the model, and the it, it it's just barely stuck to the surface. So you could just kind of pop it off. Usually, you just pop it off with your fingers, or you can um, just take an Exacto blade. Um, but again, I, I think we can do without it here. Um, and so then we're going to get down into the build plate adhesion. And so um, now this model is is fairly flat on the bottom. So I don't need uh, the adhesion on this particular model. This is another thing that might change for each different model. So let's say, for example, you are printing a, a sphere, like a plastic sphere you would definitely want to have some sort of adhesion um, and support for a sphere. Okay, so if you were putting a sphere, you'd click select this, but you would also uh, probably select the raft. And the raft is basically like, like a flat temporary support that makes it stick to the build plate. Now, there's plenty of surface area on the bottom of this model, so I'm just going to select none. The advantage of that is that um, it, it, it's just a little bit faster, you know, to print. And so um, now I uh, this this particular setting has an option here for dual extrusion, but this printer does not have a dual extruder. And so I'm going to just leave that. OK, so now once I have these settings all um, configured, I'm just going to kind of take a quick little count through here. Um, and you know what? I'm going to change this bottom layer to three just so that it mats just the wall. And um, so um, the other thing is that a lot of these settings here, if you roll over, it'll give you a little uh, little uh, snippet of what it's doing here. So, OK, so that all looks pretty good. I'm now going to then slice it. And this will process um, the, the slicing model for me. And um, so when this is done, then um, it will give me an estimate of roughly how long it will take to print. Okay, it also give me an estimate of the amount of material, and this can be helpful if you're in a, a situation where you have to pay for the material. So sometimes, if you're at like a hacker space or a maker space or something, they might have a particular cost to say like, okay, the 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 PLA material is X number of cents per gram, and um, and this this will give you an idea of that. And so, you know, once you get um, uh, this figured out, then you can just save to file. And what it'll do is this will save a G code file. And the G code file is what you actually put into the printer. 
So some printers have wireless connections. Um, this particular printer does not. So what I would do is I would save this printer or save this file to G code and then um, I would transfer it onto a, a little micro SD card and then I'd put the micro SD card into the 3D printer. And so I'm going to go ahead and save that and then um, it's going you can kind of see here it's a G code file okay and so I will actually just save that on my desktop so it's easier for me to find um, and uh, so now I have this saved um, file. You can also preview the file here and um, this will will show you some of the layers here so you can actually scan through and it's pretty cool you can actually see how the nozzle is going to print this particular shape here okay but you don't necessarily need to do that but um, uh, but that's it so once you have your g-code file then you are ready to print what I I'll often do is you know I'll, I'll, I'll keep a real close eye on that first one the first print and um, you know if you have to make any uh, changes like for example if it keeps coming off of the build plate then you might need more support and you might need a raft uh, it, adhesion so you might change that or if you're finding that it's um, not strong enough then you might um, you know change your infill so the uh, maybe if it's not strong enough you might change this to 20 or 25 or even 30 and so those are some of the the changes that you might make if you encounter some issues um, but the best thing to do is just take your G-code and uh, get it on a SD file, get it in the printer, and start printing and see what happens.